Laurie is with us in Niagara Falls. Hi, Laurie. How are you? Thank you, Mr. Ramsey, for taking my call. Sure. What's up? My husband and I are reconciling a 25-year-old marriage, and our financial situation is a disaster. We run a family farm, and I'm coming up to nearly complete reluctance to do anything different, um, the insanity thing. I need something to take away to start to get together with him and make process to progress to reduce our debt. Okay. Um, I, I didn't understand what you meant when you said you're reconciling a 25-year marriage. What does that mean? We've, we've been married 25 years, and we've been separated for two, and we're coming back together and proceeding with our marriage and our family. Okay. And w- why were you separated? Um, we had a lot of arguing and differences in how to actually do different things to get out of that. And it it was just a a very difficult, complex situation. Yeah, yeah. And did you have someone coach you as you've worked through this reconciliation process? We did for a short. We did for a short time together, but um, that didn't go much more than a few months. And I've been in counseling myself privately. Uh huh. Okay. And your current counselor is telling you that this process you're using is going to work. It doesn't sound very yeah. healthy to me. It is not the best, but it could be worse. I'm hopeful. Well, a lot of things could be worse. Somebody shooting you would be worse, but there's a lot of things that are worse, but that doesn't mean that, um, I mean, it sounds to me like you're the only one that's working on this. Pretty much. Okay. I think you need to go talk to your counselor again. And I think your counselor needs to tell you the truth. That if you go back into a situation when you're the only one that has changed, nothing's going to change. Because the, the point is, is you are coming up against an immovable object, him. And if he is not going to change, that is not reconciliation. That is, that is you acquiescing. There's a difference. That's not, you don't call that reconciliation. Reconciliation is when both parties say we both have to move to a common ground from where we are in order to go forward. And I sure, hope, where, I sure hope that can happen. But, it, you know, well, so far everything in this conversation, and it's a very short conversation on the radio, I understand. And I'm not your counselor. But, uh, but, but you guys, I mean, there has to be some movement on his side of this equation. Progress has been made on a personal level, you know, interpersonal. Okay, but when it, good. It, it, when it comes and overflows into the, the business aspect of it, this is where it's stalling out. Yep. I mean, being being together and working together all day, every day, and then having a relationship, too, it's very difficult at times to differentiate where the boundaries are between work and personal. Gotcha. So we, ha- we have made progress in the personal area, but when it comes to the finances and the hard numbers, mm-hmm. there's a lot of reluctance yeah. to explore new avenues of, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a new, new day and age in the world with marketing and, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, pushing So you work in the business still, even though you're separated? I'm on the, I help. I'm on the fringes. I'm, I'm uh, um, trying to mesh back in and pick up, you know, where we did you used Did you used to work in the business? Yes. Yes. Okay. Completely. Totally. Okay. So here's the thing, the boundaries part that you talked about. Here's a couple things you can work on there. Um, You you guys need to talk about the hats. I've got family in my business here. My my kids work here. They're grown humans, but I mean, they're my children just the same. Um, And we wear hats and the hats are when we're at home, uh, I'm Papa Dave to the grandbabies. When I'm at the office, I'm your freaking CEO and you're my employee and you can't be wifey at the office that doesn't work and he can't be husband at the office 
because you're disrespecting the CEO of the organization and he can't lead and he can't make decisions if you're playing wifey at the office. But can a wife work in the office? Absolutely. But if you're the marketing director, you report to your CEO. And if you're the CEO and he's the marketing director, he reports to you. I don't care which way it is, but you put those hats on at the office because if the other team members and the customers see you all having marital disputes at the office over office stuff, that says you don't know what your role is. And family business disintegrates into a toxic cesspool. Does that sound familiar at all? Yes. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> it's a pain in the butt isn't it but i mean we've had stuff like rachel my daughter is one of our ramsey personalities you may know that right and 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 rachel is very opinionated which makes her a great speaker and writer and so forth you need to have an opinion uh and and, and yet she works her christy writes a ramsey personality when we're in a meeting with 10 of us working on the launch of christy Wright's book and i say something christy wright does not roll her eyes She's a she's an employee of mine. I'm the CEO, right? Mm-hmm. But Rachel Cruz might have been known to do that once. Can you imagine? Now, if she rolled her eyes, what was she doing? She had the wrong hat on. She had the daughter hat on because daughters mm-hmm. roll their eyes at their dads, not employees. You know what I'm saying? Correct. And so guess what? Rachel got thumped by one of our other executives here as soon as she did that. And she tells that story. So I won't, I'm not telling out of school on her, but that was an example of one time where we forgot, one of us forgot the hat we were supposed to be wearing was not father, daughter. And I can't use my dad voice on my son in a meeting. He's one of our senior directors. And when I, I treat him like I do any other senior director with the same respect, and I thump him just as hard as I would one of our other senior directors, if they were doing something stupid in their business unit, you know, I treat him exactly the same, but I don't use my dad voice on my son. Uh, because it brings up all this other toxic stuff. So you've really got to work on that stuff in order to be able to have the influence for him to hear you about business stuff. Now, once you've got those hats established, here's another way to approach it then. You leave the physical location of the business, and you sit down over a nice meal, and you say, all right, we're changing hats. Now you're not the CEO. Now you're the husband, and I'm your wife. And as your wife... I'm going to speak into the financial decisions at the business because they affect me as your wife. My wife does that, and she doesn't work here at all. And so if we're doing something here that she gets nervous about or she doesn't understand, she doesn't hesitate from a wife's position to sit down with me in private and say, hey, Dave, I'm worried about that. That thing down there, I'm seeing this. I'm wondering about that. I know I'm on the outside, but as a wife wearing the wife hat, she has, she speaks into the business, but she doesn't stroll into the office around here and go, well, you need to do this and you need to do that. And start barking at people and telling them what to do. She doesn't work here. She doesn't have the position to do that. The only influence she has is the absolute most powerful influence there is, which is through her husband. Right. And so wearing right. the, wearing the wife hat. So I think if you can establish these differences of how you act at work and how you act at home wearing different hats okay i'm taking my husband hat off i'm asking you to take your ceo hat off and i want you to put your husband hat on and i want you to hear from your wife not one of your part-time employees that used to work here full-time before we split up right because on that basis you've got very little input a part-time employee on the fringes you said right Working, I'm working back in. Yeah, but I know, but you're not, you're not in a, from a corporate standpoint, from a business standpoint, any other employee that was looking at that, was in that kind of a role does not have influence on the CEO because part-timers don't have influence on the CEOs. And so you don't try to get at it from that angle. It's not going to work. You got to get away from the business and say, part of our marital package is that we have this business and as a wife, I want to speak into that business, not as a part-time fringe employee. And we're going to separate the two with those hats. Maybe that'll help you guys, but I think both of you need to be in coaching, counseling on a reconciliation as long as you've been married trying to put this back together. The fact that he's not attending that bothers me a lot. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content and check out these other great clips from the show. Thank you.